Hey everybody, it's Mother Goose 27 and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about the Total War Warhammer 3 Global Gameplay Global Gameplay Reveal. That's what it, that's what it's called. So two two quick things. Uh first, I apologize, I'm visiting some family right now and I don't have my typical recording setup, so please forgive the little bit of quality change. And then two, I reacted to the I guess three things. I reacted to the new cinematic in-game engine trailer yesterday. You can find that in the annotation above. And uh, to, I was planning to react to this today, but then it ended up being just a little longer than I thought it was going to be. So I figured, okay, I'll just take some notes and I will talk about it with you guys. So let's actually do that. First couple of thoughts. First couple of thoughts. This was amazing. I was so 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 happy with this i was blown away by the gameplay reveal now a couple things to remember uh this isn't the final version um so the gameplay quality probably wasn't in terms of graphics probably wasn't as good as what we're actually going to be seeing in the final version but no just overall i really really loved it so first before i really get into what i really want to talk about like the things i really enjoyed let's talk about some of the things I didn't enjoy. So first off, we didn't get a release date and we're still we're still a few months off. It's understandable and obviously with the global pandemic, they may not want to give us a release date yet because they don't want to give us one and then have to push it back a little bit. Totally understandable. But I was hoping for a release date today. We didn't get it. That's okay. Cathay. I was really really hoping for more information on Cathay. Cathay is the faction that I am most excited for. It's the faction I've probably been most excited for since, probably since I found out about them. I wasn't expecting Cathay news, to be honest. I figured we'd get exactly what we did get, a Kislev versus Korn cinematic, Kislev versus Korn gameplay re reveal. So it's what I was expecting we get, but I was a little disappointed. I was hoping we'd at least get a little bit like we did at the end of the announcement trailer where we saw the map and we saw the Jade Dragon, just even something. And maybe we did, maybe I missed it, let me know in the comments, but I was at least hoping for that. This is future Elijah. One other thing I forgot to mention. We didn't get to see any anything on a Siege Battle rework, which I think is like most likely going to happen, and we didn't see anything on Naval Battles, which I feel like is 50-50 going to happen, maybe? I was hoping to see both of those. We didn't, but there's still plenty more time. I think that's it for everything I didn't like. Let's actually like get in and talk about this. First thing I want to talk about, the new game mode, the Survival Battle. So I absolutely love this and I'm super excited for it. Now, I was reading some comments through all the videos they released today and I was reading on the subreddit. A lot of people feel like it's a MOBA and are really disappointed by that. And if you think that, please let me know why in the comments. I'd love I'd love to hear your opinion, but I personally disagree. I don't think it I don't think it's a MOBA at all. Uh I just think it's a new real-time strategy game mode. I think this is going to be really, really fun, but I did see one, one actual critique that I thought was worth bringing up. It was a user on Reddit. I can't remember their username, but I'll try and put it up here. They brought up the fact that if it's a standalone game mode, okay, but if it's something that's part of campaign, one issue that could come from it is the ability to upgrade units and recruit new units within the actual battle, which I agree could be an issue because you could just go into the battle, upgrade units, buy new units, leave, and you leave the battle better than you went in. And I can see why people who play the campaign regularly would be worried about that. That would be a little overpowered. I think it is something valid to be worried about, but I don't think we should be all up in arms and angry about it. Let's just see what CA has to say because potentially the survival battle from what I know hasn't been confirmed if it's a standalone game mode or if it's in the campaign. It may just be a standalone game mo mode or potentially it could be you can recruit new units within the battle in the campaign but you can't keep those units or I don't know. Let's just let's just wait. Let's give CA a little time to actually 
tell us more about it. I personally prefer multiplayer. I play, I've logged a couple hundred hours within Total War Warhammer 1 and 2, and I've spent most of that time playing multiplayer. I think I have one campaign that's around somewhere between turn 500 and 600, but really besides that I, I play multiplayer. So I'm so excited for the survival game mode. I think it's going to add a lot of variety. I typically just play against bots. I feel anxious playing online, not just Total War, literally all the games. I have anxiety. Don't judge me. Watching this trailer had me really, really wanting to play online against other people. And I don't know, that's what a trailer should do. It should make you excited to play the game. And that's what this trailer did. And it worked. So let's, let's talk about some of the stuff actually within the trailer. So I've got some notes. So if I'm looking at my phone, that's why. Unit upgrade. Fantastic. I'm actually really, really excited for that feature. On these survival maps, it's going to add a lot, a lot of variety, especially playing multiplayer against other players. If both players can upgrade units, it could really change how the game works. I know I already talked about it, but I really am excited for the ability to buy and recruit new units mid-battle. Again, just another feature that especially in multiplayer, it's just really, really going to shake things up. Like, I'm guessing it won't be in the main battle mode and it won't be in like free-for-all stuff like that, but for multiplayer, multiplayer survival modes, I'm just really excited to see how some of like, just the play, the community in general use these new features, but like the actual professionals, the ones who go to tournaments, like what they do with it. I think it's I'm really excited to see how it turns out, and I think just for everyone, it's going to add a lot of gameplay opportunities. The end game portals. The end game portals. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Like, I mean, I get it. We're in the realms of chaos. It makes sense to bring reinforcements for both sides that they use a portal to get in. You can't just kind of tr bring reinforcements out of nowhere in the realms of chaos i don't know i'm really interested to see if that's just for the realms of chaos or if that's going to apply to all of all of the maps i think for the chaos factions it's probably a given that you'll be using those teleporters a lot throughout the immortal worlds as well but having everyone be able to use it within the chaos realms makes sense but will the other factions be able to use those portals outside of the Chaos Realms? I don't know. What do you guys think? I personally don't think so, but you never know. Talking about the Chaos Realms, that map, the corn, this corn area looks amazing. It looked so good. It was, I loved, loved seeing it. And I'm so glad that we're actually getting a chunk of the Chaos Realms or... I'm so glad that we're actually getting to be inside the Chaos Realms and take the war to chaos. The Patriarchs I thought were really interesting. Uh, I love, I mean, they're basically just a buff unit, but they ride bears, which I think is pretty great. But the unit I really want to talk about is the Bear Drawn Cannon Cavalry unit. This guy. I think this is my favorite unit you revealed for the game so far. Just the two bears, it kind of reminds me of the White Witch from the Chronicles of Narnia, but instead of a witch, it's a cannon, which I think is absolutely amazing. And I really hope we get a version of this, but instead of the cannon, cannon, it's a mount for Katarine. Did I pronounce her name right? I know, I just said it yesterday. I don't know, I always get so stressed about her name. Anyway, moving on. Talking about our glorious Tsarina Katarine, she freaking rides ice like Frozone! That was so interesting. I was that part had me so hyped and I'm really excited just to use that. I really want to play Kislev. Really like Kislev. Kislev was the faction I was least excited about. If I'm being honest, before we got any announcements of Total War Warhammer 3, if if we got the announcement and there was no Kislev, I would have been totally okay. But now that we've actually seen it and I get to see Kislev and all of these amazing things like Katarine skateboarding on ice, ice skating, creating ice under me, freaking frozoning it. I'm really excited to play this faction and I'm glad, I'm glad we got it and I'm glad that I 
was wrong about their inclusion. The elemental ice bear. Okay, I'm still a little confused on this. I didn't talk about it in my last video, but I talked about it in the comments a little bit. Is this a unit we can actually bring into the battle, or is it a, sum a summonable unit? Because in the gameplay trailer, we see it walk out of a portal. It makes me think it is a unit you can just summon. In the second video where the devs are talking about producing the game, they say this. A spell is cast and then the unit kind of comes together out of a pile of snow and trees and rocks from the ground and it turns into this massive entity basically. Which really makes me think this is a summonable unit? Maybe it's both? I don't know, what do you guys think in the comments? Building structures! This is one reason I'm really, really excited for the survival game mode, is the fact that we can b now build walls between choke points to help slow enemies down. Turrets as well are going to be really useful, but the ability to add walls I think is really, really great for these survival modes. I think it's going to add an air of realism to it. Now that they've implemented that feature into the game, that would be great. That would be absolutely amazing in siege battles. Battles, Hear me out. Imagine this. You and your army are on the walls. You're defending it. The walls fall. You've got to push back into the city. What do you do? Between buildings, you build those little things to help slow down the advancing enemy units. Siege battles needs a huge rework overall. But just that one feature would really, really make a difference. I really hope that feature is implemented for sure into Siege Battles. We don't know yet for sure, but that would be amazing. Even in other types of battles would be great too. Even if you could just build little walls here and there to help kind of build defensive structures on the go. Oh, I think that would be amazing. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm sorry, I know I keep saying it, but there's a lot of speculation right now. We don't know a lot and... I have my thoughts, but I really want to know your thoughts, so that's why I keep saying it. The last thing I want to talk about for the actual survival map was the Gatekeeper. An exalted bloodthirster of corn. Couple things. Looked amazing. Super excited to fight. I'm super excited to use them, but I'm really excited to fight against them. We got to see several flying animations, which I know is a really big thing in the community. Are they going to fly? Are they not going to fly? Looking at this clip here, I'm pretty sure they will also have the ability to fly. Super excited for that. I know I've already talked about the developers video a little bit already, but I want to talk about it just a little more before we actually end this video. My big, big highlight from that video was the fact that they're committed to making this feel like a Total War Warhammer game, while in the same time expanding, improving, and adding new things, which I absolutely love. Of course, we all want this to feel like a Total War Warhammer game, but there's a ton of features that we as a community know that we want added. Better siege battles, naval battles if possible, better unit formations, stuff like that. Those are all either new game modes or quality of life stuff that would be fantastic. And if we just got Total War Warhammer 2 with basically all the same functions, runs the same, acts the same, but then we just get new races and new maps, that would suck. And so the fact that they are committed to adding and expanding onto the experience makes me really happy, it makes me really excited, and I think that's really the biggest takeaway from that video. And they also said that there's a lot of things they're adding that they haven't really heard the community ask for, or a lot of things that we don't know we want, basically. I'll play the clip right here. From the gameplay point of view, we really want to show that we've taken the experience that players are familiar with from Warhammer 1 and 2 and really polished it and refined it whilst also introducing some nice little surprises in there that will really make it the best playing Total War Warhammer game we've ever made. And so it's got me really, really excited. Like me personally, I didn't even think of the survival battles. It wasn't on my mind at all. Any of the features, especially the being able to build walls on the go, has me really excited. That thought never even crossed my mind. In all the speculation, in all the hours of playing, never crossed my mind. So I'm super excited. Next thing I want to bring up from that video is one of their devs says this. Focus on the eastern fringes of the map has really allowed us to explore never before seen races in such detail in any Warhammer IP. I'm not sure what she's saying. The first time I watched it, I heard her say new races never before seen, but then she might have said reaches, like in terms of the map. I literally watched this clip three or four times and I, I couldn't tell exactly what she said. I am 90% sure now that she's not saying new races 
but I could be wrong. What, what did you guys hear? I'm, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. It was really cool to get to see some of the early animations for the Elemental Ice Bear and the Bloodthirster. Really loved that. It was just great to get to see how these devs think, what their process is, how hard they've been working, and um, I'm really excited for more. I was checking the viewer count pretty regularly and the most I saw was around 46,000, but I wasn't checking as often as I should, so we'll, I'm guessing we probably had around 50,000 people watching, which just makes me so excited. I love this community and I just am so glad to see there's so many of us out there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to join the flock and I'll see you in the next one. Mother Goose out.